hi welcome to my channel I'm gonna talk brief and precise about gait abnormalities for exam purpose only which thing is important for your exam like USMLE so let's start gait abnormalities first is types so I am really focusing on cerebral ataxia hypokinetic ataxia which is shuffling gait waddling gait spastic gait sensory ataxia vestibular ataxia wide based gait dystonic gait and um, last is gait disequilibrium so I will go step by step first is cerebellar ataxia cerebellar ataxia so cerebellar ataxia ataxia gate and position which uh, is um, think about cerebellum so cerebellar ataxia is related to cerebellum left cerebellar tumor so there will be a tumor the A, A is showing swell to the right in standing position to the right standing position B is steady on the right leg C is unsteady on the left leg and C is it happens like a gate is like from a ataxic gate just focus on the steps which is gait abnormality with the cerebellar ataxia so the key points for cerebellar ataxia is it is always ipsilateral fall towards the side of the lesion this is important for the exam if the case will be like fall towards the side of the lesion think about first your differential diagnosis will be cerebellar ataxia Romberg sign will be positive so Romberg sign is positive in the case of syphilis Tabes dorsalis vitamin b12 deficiency and lot of other abnormalities but you also you also think uh, dif as a differential in the case of cerebellar ataxia so think about eye open or closed both there will be a Romberg sign so on the other cl clinical features associated with cerebellar ataxia is dysarthria nystagmus slurred speech intention tremor so the key points I want you to highlight is ipsilateral which is ipsilateral on one side falls toward side of the lesion and Romberg sign positive eyes open or closed this diagram I made to understand just think about ipsilateral fall towards the side of the lesion if lesion is on this side there will be a fall towards the side of the lesion so this is the key points which I'm highlighting to understand cerebral ataxia let's move on to the next which is hypokinetic ataxia shuffling gait key points chasing his center of gravity so, so patient is trying to chase his center of gravity and this is important the disease think about Parkinsonism whenever you think about hypokinetic think about Parkinsonism it is always slow short stride improves with external cues aggravated by secondary task so for exam purpose just think about hypokinetic 
is there if the hypokinetic is in the option think about parkinson disease slow what are the other clinical features of, of parkinson bradykinesia rigidity and tremors this is parkinson's disease you can think about muhammad ali kale as a boxer so he has uh, parkinson's disease so next is wa waddling gait or waddling gait whatever it is so here i remember for the exam for my exam also for the usmle i think about w is for for uh, weak muscles so think about w as a weak muscles waddling gait this is normal and this is trendelberg sign w is for weak and w is for waddling gait so waddling gait is weak gluteal or gluteus muscles trendelberg sign drop of pelvis when lifting leg opposite to weak gluteal gluteus muscles so the key points i want you to highlight is weakness of the gluteal muscles weakness of the gluteal muscles w is for weakness of the gluteal muscle so in medicine you have to mug up you have to also try to remember things again and again so for the w is for weakness of the gluteal muscle it is problem with the gluteal muscles so that's why the sign will be trendelberg sign now i will move on to the spastic ataxia spastic ataxia is you think about spastic means spasm there is a spasm with the muscles you can say so spastic gait the position of the body human body will be like that the key points is spastic means spasm so upper motor neuron lesion will be there just think about upper motor neuron lesions is related with the spastic and lower motor neuron lesions is related with flaccid paral paralysis or paralysis okay just think about this and also upper motor neuron is related with hyper reflexia lower motor neuron is related with hypo reflexia and also fasciculation so spastic means spasm upper motor neuron lesion cns palsy will be also will be there so cns means brain plus spinal cord now sensory means you sense when you sense something so sensory ataxia is look this guy he is feeling something sense senses is sensory ataxia is uh, he sense something and uh, putting his uh, step when he sense so i mean to say is the key points which we really uh, think about is he has like peripheral nerves so peripheral nerves dorsal or posterior columns these all are related to the nerves uh, sensory nerves or uh, dorsal column or posterior columns is related with sensory and the uh, anterior col columns is associated with or is uh, dealing with what motor thank you so romberg sign will also be positive here eyes closed so it is kind of like cerebellar but the thing is you need to remember is it is because problem with sensory nerves so think about the key points are peripheral nerves dorsal posterior columns romberg signs is positive eyes closed 
before moving to vestibular ataxia I will just focus a little bit again about sensory ataxia is think about peripheral nerves this is important for the exams so vestibular ataxia is staggering gait it is about of course with the nerve also vertigo will be there and nystagmus so think about it is related with the ear problem and uh, the and the patient is having staggering gait but um, before um, thinking about any ataxia or gait abnormality you have to think about what is going on with the body which part of the body or which organ is related to which whatever it is so now I will move on to the wide based gait wide based gait the, the name tells you wide means wide based so key points are also seen in sensory ataxia cerebellar disorders and muscular dystrophies wide based is related to sensory ataxia also cerebellar disorders and muscular dystrophies this is normal step and here is think like this the normal gap here the gap is uh, a little bit not really a little bit it is more gap here and the steps are like wide based gait abnormality now the next is dystonic gait dystonic mean is you think about the, the twisting of the muscle dystonia which we call so dystonic gait is involuntary sustained twisting movements of the limbs and trunk I will repeat involuntary sustained twisting mo movements of the limbs and trunk so here is dystonia here now this ataxia is related with dystonia So get this equilibrium is the last part. Just think about this equilibrium means it's not in equilibrium or it's not alignment is not be the same. So get this equilibrium is not in equilibrium. Frontal lobe and multiple sensory sy systems. So the th thing I want you to highlight is frontal lobe is affected somewhere and multiple sensory systems could be there mostly the, the thing I want you to highlight is frontal lobe now here we go hemiplegia or plagia is here Let's think about he has something with his feet Parkinson is very slow what was the gait abnormality in Parkinson disease hypokinetic good cerebral ataxia is like that there's a long gap white based you can see okay I will move on to the foot drop so foot drop is related to which nerve common peroneal nerve and here we go sensory ataxia I put the same photo over there sensory ataxia it feels like and then there will be a ataxic gait now here are the, the here are some terms which you need to uh, talk about is acetosis is you know uh, the movement of the fingers dystonia akinetic rigidity with the muscles hemibalism and here is hemitremor both on the one side okay let me again review these all these gait abnormalities once more for the exam purpose only so I will start from the 
beginning. So what was the key points in cerebral ataxia? The key points in cerebral ataxia were ipsilateral and other thing is fall on the same side fall towards the side of the lesion and Romberg sign is positive okay hypokinetic is just think about Parkinson disease shuffling gait no more welding gait W is for weakness weakness of the gluteal muscle so Trendelberg um, sign will be there Trendelenburg sign okay spastic ataxia spasm of the muscle just think about that spasm spastic is upper new upper motor neuron problem upper motor neuron lesion spastic lower motor neuron lesion will be flaccid paralysis sensory ataxia is because of the sense so peripheral nerves um, dorsal posterior columns affected Romberg sign is also positive just think about you know vitamin B12 Romberg sign is also positive and in vitamin B12 it is subacute combined degeneration and tapes dorsalis is involvement of also dorsal posterior columns kind of like same so vestibular ataxia just think, think about vertigo and nystagmus wide based gait what um, the key points are wide, wide based gait it's like it involves in sensory ataxia uh, cerebellar ataxia and muscular dystrophies yes sensory ataxia cerebellar disorders and uh, muscular dystrophies So this is wide based. So let me repeat for the wide based gait. Sensory ataxia could be there, uh, cerebellar disorder could be there, muscular dystrophies, maybe Duchenne, Becker. So dystonic is dis related to dystonia. So it's kind of simple in the exam if you see the case scenario is the involvement of the sustained twisting the movement of the limbs and trunk especially on the um, neck side sternocleidomastoid so you can think about that dystonia so gait disequilibrium I think this option will be if you see in this the, in your real exam gait disequilibrium just think about what frontal lobe and multiple sen sensory sy systems but it is very r I think uh, it's not really important for the exam purpose so these are the uh, starting from here goes here slow wide or um, you can say cerebral ataxia foot drop and uh, sensory ataxia foot drop is common peroneal nerve yes okay again the same photo now do tell me if you like my video and if you want to share something uh, more uh, just comment on my video and uh, put a lot of stuff which I'm lacking right now I'm just missing a lot of things uh, if I'm confusing a lot of stuff together just tell me with your comments and uh, we can make this uh, get abnormalities as much much possible for the uh, for the students who are appearing for the exams like um, like me and you so just think about it is really helpful to understand neurology which is very important for the exam for um, USMLE for PLAB for AMC license medical license exam so the thing is you have to focus on this gait abnormalities if you have one question from this gait abnormality you have to pick and just focus on this high, high, high yield concept which I am just trying to share with you so thank you so much thank you for watching and subscribe medwits thank you so very much bye